Hey, and welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna find the uh, Galois group of a polynomial, and it's gonna be uh, this polynomial right here. Um, and so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna figure out what is the splitting field of this polynomial. Um, so it's not super hard to see um, if you just graph this or using trial and error, that uh, three is a root of uh, this polynomial, g of x. Um, and why is that? Well, it's because uh, g of three is equal to, if you just compute, it's 81 uh, minus, I guess it would be 54 minus 24 minus three. Um, and here you get uh, 54 and 24, so that's 78. So this is 81 minus 78 minus three, blah, blah, blah. So that's equal to zero. Uh, so three is in fact a root of this polynomial. And so we can definitely um, factor it by pulling out a linear factor of x minus three. Uh, and what's left over, well, it would be kind of time consuming to uh, show you all of the long division that you would need to get the remainder here. Um, but the, the remaining polynomial that's left after you pull this out is x cubed plus x squared plus 3x plus 1. Um, so basically, g of x has um, a, a, a rational root. And um, there's this remaining polynomial here. And so now we're interested in figuring out if this polynomial has any rational roots or uh, if it's irreducible. Um, because we, we now really just care about the splitting field of this polynomial that's left over. Um, but I'm gonna claim that this polynomial, which I guess we can call h of x. So I'm gonna claim that h of x is actually um, an irreducible polynomial over q. And uh, to show that, um, I'm gonna use a trick, which is that if h is irreducible over a finite field, then it's irreducible over q, uh, and also z, because those are equivalent to each other. Um, and this is a nice trick. The reason it works um, is because it's basically just contrapositive. So if you think about if you had a polynomial that was reducible over the rational numbers, it would still be reducible over a finite field if you just reduce the coefficients. And so this is just the contrapositive of that statement. Um, so, and the finite field that we're gonna choose is F5. Um, and in F5, you can check that H doesn't have any roots. Um, and that's because H of zero is equal to one. H of one uh, is equal to one plus one plus three plus one, which in F5 is the same as one. Um, H of two, on the other hand, is equal to four. Um, so again, if you just plug in, you get something that's four modulo five. Uh, meanwhile, h of three is gonna be equal to, let's see, believe this is equal to one in F5. Um, and then finally, h of four is uh, equal to uh, three in F5. So none of these are equal to zero. And so because h of x is a cubic, that shows you that it's irreducible in F5. Great. So now we know that h of x is actually an irreducible polynomial. Um, but we also know that, you know, again, h of x is cubic, and cubic polynomials always have a real root. Um, so h, um, you know, we don't know exactly what the graph looks like. Maybe it looks something like this. Um, but cubic polynomials always go to negative infinity uh, in one direction and positive infinity in the other direction. So they either have a shape kind of like this or they have a shape kind of like that. But either way, they have to cross the real axis. And so by the intermediate value theorem, 
they have to have a real root. So h has a real root. Um, but if you do some calculus and you take the derivative of h, um, so recalling what h of x was, the derivative of h would be 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. Um, that's h prime of x. Uh, it's pretty easy to show that uh, this polynomial here is always, uh, in fact, positive. Uh, so h is always increasing. And so not only does h have a real root, it has exactly one real root uh, because it does not have any turning points. Um, so those two things together tell you that h has a single real root uh, and that it also has two uh, complex conjugate roots. Okay. Um, but whenever you have a polynomial with complex conjugate roots, it's a uh, Galois group. So the, the uh, Galois group of H over Q, uh, this has to contain uh, complex conjugation because uh, complex conjugation is um, an automorphism. It is uh, Q linear. And uh, because H has two complex conjugate roots, complex conjugation switches those roots. Um, so it, it satisfies all of the criteria to be um, an element of this Galois group right here. Um, so that means that, um, you know, if we just call this G, so G contains uh, complex conjugation. And so if you number the roots of H appropriately, you could just write complex conjugation as a transposition like this. Um, but not only um, do you have that transposition, you also have a three cycle. And the reason you have a three cycle is because H is irreducible. So whenever you have an irreducible uh, polynomial, the um, action of the Galois group is transitive, right? So the action of G um, in this case has to be transitive. Um, but G is a subgroup of S3. Uh, the only transitive subgroups of S3 are the ones that contain uh, three cycles. Um, so we don't know which uh, three cycle it is. Maybe it's this one. Again, it just depends on how you uh, numbered the roots of H and everything like that. Um, but you know that it has to contain at least one of them. Um, but what are the subgroups of S3? that contain a three cycle and also contain transposition, um, well, the only such subgroup is S3, um, which is fairly easy to show. Um, and so that means that the Galois group of, of uh, H is S3, um, but remember H was what we got when we just pulled this linear factor off of G. And so that means that uh, S3 is also the Galois group of uh, G as well. And that's the end of the video. So thanks very much for watching.